Hey everybody, uh, this is uh, First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich. I wanted to put a quick video together tonight uh, before the 11 o'clock news. I probably will not post this till later tonight. Um, the main reason I'm doing this is really not to scare people, but I have a wide audience online that extends into Ohio, Tennessee, Kentucky, all over the southeast, and even for people here in the Carolinas. Tomorrow's weather setup is one of those setups we don't see very often as far as the amount of severe weather potential out there. It reminds me a lot of last April when we had several tornado outbreaks including April 27th uh, down in Alabama when we had numerous tornadoes break out. Now I hate comparing events because none, none of these events are ever the same but the ingredients in the atmosphere really are coming together for a large and dangerous severe weather outbreak tomorrow from Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and maybe into the Carolinas. So I want you to pay particular attention to some of the information I'm going to talk about. Some of it's going to be technical, but the thing, it, it doesn't matter where you live. I don't care where you live. You need to be prepared for severe weather. It's better to be safe than sorry. Um, the specific timing is going to be difficult right now. All I can tell you is to be ready at any time, Friday through Saturday morning, things will get better as we go into Saturday and Sunday. I don't like giving specific times out until the storms are actually on the ground and I can track them because it gives people, one, a false sense of security if I tell them the wrong time, or it, thinks, uh, it makes people think that it's coming when it's not. So I like to wait on the specifics and just get into time frames. As things get closer, we'll be able to narrow those times down. So here's what I think is going to happen starting tomorrow. through. All right, let's get into specifics of what I think is going to happen. Some of this is going to be technical. A lot of this is going to be the kind of parameters coming together tomorrow. What you're looking at right now is the CAPE. You're going to hear this word a lot. CAPE is C-A-P-E. It stands for Convective Available Potential Energy. It's what us meteorologists use to talk about thunderstorm fuel. It's one ingredient. It's important. It's a surface-based ingredient. Um, but this is the type of thunderstorm fuel. It doesn't always mean you're going to get severe thunderstorms, but it means you're going to get thunderstorms, thunder and lightning. You will get parcels of air to be lifted high into the atmosphere, creating usually thunder and lightning. And if other ingredients are there, um, you can get severe weather. Uh, the, the more cape you have, the more fuel you have for the fire. So you can see tonight we've already got a lot of, of that cape building to our south. That's actually the warm front which is beginning to move back to the north. So that's currently what's going on. Let's take a look at some model data. I'm primarily going to focus on the NAM4. Now the color palette's a little different. Um, I apologize because the model data has a little bit different color palette. Um, but you can see the cape uh, tonight they are pretty much in the same location we just showed it. As we go through the day tomorrow, notice that this thunderstorm fuel starts to build. And you can actually detect, here's the warm front right here across the Carolinas. Here's the cold front back here. So that's why we could see two waves of severe weather here in the Carolinas. One with the warm front and then eventually Saturday morning with the cold front. So watch how this unfolds. Um, notice how the cape during the day, this is again during the afternoon hours, really peaks here. We're talking between two to as much as 3500 cape. That's very, very high. It doesn't take much cape uh, in, with this type of wind shear to get a lot of severe weather and we've got plenty of cape tomorrow. So you can see the thunderstorm fuel is peaking right ahead of the cold front. There's a little batch here in the Carolinas but that's mainly because of the warm front. As we go through the day tomorrow into the evening hours you can see how that front and that's the front. You can see it progressing to the east slowly but surely and then moving into the Carolinas early Saturday morning. This is the thing that may save the Carolinas. Loss of daytime heating kills the cape or kills the fuel um, and that looks to be the case going into Saturday morning. So that was a look at the cape. Let's look at shear or more importantly um, what we like to call storm relative helicity in the lowest levels. This is basically rotation. How, how much rotation can you get in these thunderstorms. So this is a very bright color palette. I like it because it shows me the areas of most concern, the, the reds, pinks, oranges, and these whites off the charts, 450 meters squared per second squared, which is a lot. Just trust me on that. Uh, we'll go out in time into the day tomorrow. Um, again, what you're trying to look for is areas where you saw the cape and the shear or the helicity here kind of matching up. And if you want, I can actually plot these two together here in a second. But notice how, as we go into tomorrow afternoon, remember how the Cape built, built up across Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee? Notice how the shear is building up in that same area. Um, I'm going to go back. I jumped ahead. But you can see, and even in here in the Carolinas, the one thing we have, we have plenty of shear. We're not going to have the Cape, though. That's the one thing that may save us. 
So again, this is all about ingredients. What ingredients do we have in the atmosphere? So that is off the charts shear. In fact, when you start looking at some of the other parameters, the, the significant tornado parameter, which is a kind of a combination of several of these, which I basically just said overlaying all those, you see where it's starting to peak here. I mean, this is off the charts between 7 and 10 over parts of Kentucky, Tennessee, up into Indiana and Ohio. This area, this is as close to 100% chance of at least some tornadoes as you get, um, and probably strong long track tornadoes. When you look at um, another parameter I like, which is called EHI, it's Energy Helicity Index. This is a combination of that wind shear I just showed you and the cape kind of put together. So if we put this out into the future here, look at that area in western Tennessee and Kentucky as well peaking up around um, a four or five pretty high and then look at how this line sets up here so you see the areas that we're watching going to some other model data let's look at that thunderstorm fuel again um, this is a forecast from our model our RPM model uh, notice how it builds I mean I like this color palette because this shows you basically it looks like gasoline being poured on a fire um, look at the very end here though the one thing that may save the Carolinas it really weakens quite a bit uh, we can't count on that happening, but boy, that's at least a good sign. I'll let this loop one more time um, to give you an idea of what it looks like. So this is Saturday after the front moves through. We things really dry out. Could be some convective snow showers on the <coughs> excuse me on the backside, which is what you're going to see here briefly uh, moving into the North Carolina mountains. That was likely some convective type snow. So I'll show you one more time. Look at this building up and look where it's heading. It's peaking right in here. This area right in here is definitely going to get clobbered. What does that look like as far as future radar? Let's look at the future radar. This will show you the future radar. And when I show you all this stuff, you, you've probably noticed one thing that's been in common with all of this all of this data. This area right in here, Kentucky, Tennessee, boy, it, it that seems to be the area. And if you look at the model, these look like supercells developing and even some out ahead of it. Down, in, there could be a couple isolated supercells developing down in Alabama, and then we go out into the future. As we go into early Saturday morning, what's going to happen here in the Carolinas? We may get a squall line to develop. I would rather see this than these individual cells, but there could be a couple right in here that, that looks interesting. Something to keep an eye on as we go out into the future. So obviously, the Storm Prediction Center already has a moderate risk up for areas from Ohio down and you notice this is the area I just showed you on the model data moderate risk and I can almost guarantee that this will be upgraded to a high risk happens maybe once or twice a year high risk means severe weather is imminent it's it's one of those things like I just said it's about as close to a guarantee of a tornado or severe weather occurring when you look at the actual probabilistic this is just for severe weather in general, not tornadoes, but severe weather. You're talking probably 50% probability of severe weather, and that 15% extends into parts of North Carolina. So the time frame, just to kind of give you an idea, let's go back to this, and I'll show you what it looks like from a time frame standpoint for the Carolinas. This is early tomorrow morning. Um, notice we've got tons of shear, but no cape yet building. Once the cape builds up, you're going to notice... A band of showers heading towards the Carolinas. This is the warm front. We could see a couple strong storms here in the morning. Uh, I don't think they're going to be very tall, so maybe some hail, some gusty winds. But got to keep an eye on these. These could be little frisky storms developing early tomorrow. Then we go into the afternoon. Watch these initial storms up here. This is along the warm front. Um, and meeting up with the cold front, that triple point, there could be some strong storms. But really the bigger storms are going to develop ahead of the cold front later in the afternoon and you start to see those developing back in here maybe first starting in Illinois Indiana some starting down in um, parts of Alabama and Georgia and again any of these could be rotating because of that shear whoops I skipped a couple frames there we'll go back to uh, this is 7 p.m. tomorrow night notice the isolated cells here but notice even along the line we're getting some isolated cells and then we go out uh, 8 9 10 11 this is all eastern time by the way if you're in the central time zone take an hour off okay so now you're talking about 4z uh, z which is uh, roughly about you know 10 to 11 o'clock and don't take the times precisely because this could change based on the development of storms but this is just a general idea and then going into the overnight hours you see this line which hopefully will transition to a big uh, 
MCS, which I would prefer, but we still got some isolated cells down here, maybe embedded um, rotation within this line, and then moving out into the future and then moving into North Carolina by Saturday morning. So that should give you a rough idea um, on when these storms are going to move in. So I'm still pinpointing these areas just like the Storm Prediction Center tomorrow. The worst of it will be to our west. The question marks will be how much of this severe weather ends up moving into the Carolinas as we go into the evening hours. So something I'll keep an eye on, please have your severe weather safety plans in order tonight as we go into the day tomorrow and Saturday. Of course, I'll have complete details on this starting tomorrow at 4, 5, 6, and 11. And of course, tonight coming at 11, make sure you tune in.